Hi guys, this is Gabriel from Catspace here again. This week I want to go through how to create a squared around transitional duct using uh, the sheet metal functionality in SolidWorks. Um, you can see that I've already created one. I um, just want to show you what the expected you know, outcome of it and how you can use it. It's not just fixed for one particular use. I've got my parameters for the bottom sketch and I've got my parameters for the top sketch. So if I change the width and it's now you know, 75 or something, can update it if I change the top, skew it a bit more, change the size to a little bit bigger, make it 20. You know, it's updating for me as I go along, and I can still hit flatten at any stage. Okay, so that's what I want us to create in this uh, in this video. So we do that by going to new, new part. The first thing I want to do is create a new sketch in the top plane. Uh, this will be a rectangle because that's squared around and just create some dimensions for it and just make that 200 and just make that 150 it's fine now two things to remember when using the sheet metal lofted bend which is what we're going to use you need to have uh, round corners over here so I'm going to add some fillets uh, and 10 mils is fine and the other thing to remember is we need to have a little gap in one of the edges or somewhere so that it can actually join up and this is where it will actually be rolled um, so what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to quickly add a cut, I'm just going to draw a rectangle, it doesn't matter how big it is, I'm just going to cut that there. A little sneaky way of doing it. Um, just go smart dimension, and I want the gap between the two faces there to be half a millimetre, so I'm going to make it 0.25 on one side, and 0.25 on this other side here. And I think you'll understand what I'm, what I'm specifying here when, I, when you see the 3D model. So that's a bottom sketch. Um, I want to create a circular face, a circular sketch up the top here somewhere. So go to the top plane, hold down the control, and then drag this plane up. And we'll just say about 150. And hit OK. Now let's create a new sketch on this plane using a circle. And I'm just going to do normal two view. Now what I always want is, I always want it to be in line horizontally with the origin. So let's add that relation, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it needs to be on top of the origin. I always want to have control of this skewing d parameter if you like. So I'm just going to leave it at 50 for now, but it can also be zero. So I can double click on it and make it zero. If I do that now, what will happen is the actual circle will be just on top and I can double click and change it back to 50. So similar to the um, square sketch, I will actually need a gap as well. So what I'll do here is, um, let's just move this so I can see a bit more clearly. I can have a gap down here somewhere, and it's it's nice to do it on the same sort of, you know, up and down sort of Z, just so it lines up nicely. And I'm just going to trim that middle bit and just get rid of the rest as well. And same sort of technique, just you know, using referencing that middle point. I want to be 0.25 just so I can have a half mil clearance. Okay, and again, that's fully defined, so that's what we want all the time. Let's go back to isometric view, and I can just hide this plane, I don't need to see it anymore. Now I can go ahead and use my lofted bend. The last thing to remember about using the lofted bend is that make sure you select the same side. So if I select this left right side over here, and I connect it to the left side over there, it's just not going to work. Just make sure you select that right side here, and that way you'll see it works straight away. So they've made some improvements in the lofted bend in SolarWorks 2014. They've actually included manufacturing methods. So formed is what we always had, and, and the sample that I showed you was, used, was created using formed. You can't see any of the lines used to create those, um, those bends, because they were formed. Um, but most of the time, we actually create these transitions using a, a press break. So we want to make sure that we can see some lines and it actually is going to work. Um, so they've given us some ways to specify the number of lines or, or the core tolerances and things like that. I'm just going to you know, use number of bends and I'm going to set it to 10. And the, more, the higher it is, the more bends you have to do, but the more accurate you know, your end result will be. But obviously we need to get to some point where we're happy with the result. Being sheet metal, it's we need to specify the thickness of it, the bend radius, the bend allowance, and the order of relief. If you have any questions about those, you can always just email me and I can explain them. And we can just hit OK. So there's my squared around 
um, transitional piece. Um, obviously we can get a flat pattern from this and we can also get the bend lines. So obviously we can create a drawing from this and the guys in the workshop can uh, follow it along. Um, as I mentioned before, I wanted to have a half a mil clearance between this face here sorry, and this face here. So that's why I introduced those little gaps and made 0.25 mil spacing. Um, and again, what I was mentioning before, we've got our sketch here. So if I make these even longer and make that 350, you can see how it's always updating for me. If I make this, if I skew it a bit more, let's say 75, make it a bigger circle. You know, there's no there's there's no pos no end to the possibilities of a type of um, squared around duct we can create. If you guys have any questions, feel free to email me. Thanks for watching. Bye.